Hello, my name is Hannah Huang, and this is a slice of my technological life in quarantine. Let's get started. <laughs> when we all first started quarantining in March, I spent a lot of time wallowing in misery and self-pity, but then I remembered that I had a phone and I could reach out to people. So once I started doing that, I started feeling a lot less lonely um, and started feeling a lot better. I'm clearly not the only person that's using video chatting as a way to cope with loneliness because, according to the New York Times, the daily traffic for a bunch of different video chatting apps like House Party or Nextdoor have increased by up to 80%. Because of FaceTime, I was able to reach out to other people and my friends were able to see me during very crucial quarantine moments, such as cutting my bangs. Oh my god, it's happening. It's happening. Do you think this is too much hair? Or is this like a good feathered? I think that's good. Maybe I yeah. don't want bangs after all. It's too late. <laughs> During my quarantine period of moping, my mother became increasingly worried about my physical health. And so she signed me up for this online exercise class that was like a 21 day challenge. Um, as much as I didn't like the exercising with a bunch of people that I didn't know, it did get me motivated to FaceTime my friend Waverly and then we do daily workouts together. So thank you to my mother for forcing me to work out at the beginning of the quarantine. According to the BBC, fitness equipment sales increased by 55% as soon as lockdown started. So everyone's getting the same idea. Waverly and I started FaceTiming each other once a day to do workouts and at first we only did abs and then it kind of evolved into a full body, full exercise routine that um, I'm very grateful for because it keeps me in both physical and emotional health. Um, exercising helps me feel a lot better and it keeps me in shape for the hockey season. Oh. Good job. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. While scrolling through Instagram one day, I discovered that my friend had started a letter writing club and was advertising it for people to join. And as I had once aspired to be an author and used to have a pen pal when I was a kid, I thought that this was the perfect opportunity to rekindle my love for writing and keep in touch with friends at the same time. I didn't know a lot of people who were in the club, so I badgered all of my friends into giving me their addresses and got my pen and paper ready. I was so excited about sending letters that I now have the mailman's route memorized. I know exactly when he's coming to my house and who he is, although I've yet to ask him his name, which I should probably do. I've also chased him down a few times to give him my letters, so I think that our relationship is pretty solid. In my opinion, there are very few things as exciting as getting a handwritten note delivered specifically for you. I also like to flatter myself into thinking that I'm doing future historians a favor. And you know, I honestly find writing letters more magical than sending text messages because for text messages, I have like a general idea of how it works. I push a couple buttons and it digitally beams itself up into space into zeros and ones and then beams itself back into my friend's phone. So actually I was wrong. It transmits itself into a radio wave and beams itself into a cell phone tower, which then goes to a mobile switch center and then goes to the next cell phone tower that's closest to whoever you're sending a text message. And then that's where it gets delivered. So I stand corrected. But with letters, I write a letter, I put it in the mailbox, I check back on the mailbox a couple hours later, and the letter's gone. Where does it go? And then in a few days, it appears in my friend's mailbox. Absolutely magical. Quarantine has also given me the opportunity to try things that I probably wouldn't have tried otherwise. Some of the non-technological examples would be carving wooden spoons or other small figurines, but what I certainly could never have done without some sort of video chatting app is be able to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'd been curious about D&D before, but it didn't really seem like anything I'd ever take part in. I always wrote it off as like a nerdy, hobby that I would get bullied for, but I thought that since I'm in quarantine and also my old high school mentor started a group, it would be the perfect opportunity for me to join. We meet every Sunday evening for a couple of hours and I've been having a really good time. Aside from my mentor, the other people in this D&D group were total strangers to me. And it's fun to say that I've met some new people during lockdown. I'm very glad that I started playing it and I look forward to it every single weekend. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Roll to see if he made off with the crab. <laughs> no! No! I'm gonna. No! You're all the nines. 
uh, looks like you didn't get much. <laughs> You got something, you already ate. You got something. Ashton's still ruining my life and he's not even here. <laughs> so this is it. The end of the video. Thanks for watching and learning a bit more about my relationship with technology during this weird half year. I think that the biggest thing about technology to me is communication. I use it primarily to be able to reach out to other people and feel connected with others, whether it's my family all the way across the world or my friends just down the street. Without my little window into the bigger world, I'm sure I would have been having a lot harder of a time isolated at home. So, thanks technology. And end. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.